Good evening, class, and welcome to Go Math Lesson 7.7, .7, Area and Mixed Numbers. All right, before we get started, let's take a look at our essential question. How can you use a unit tile to find the area of a rectangle with fractional side lengths? So we're going to be looking at our investigate. So let's take a look. You can use square tiles with side lengths that are unit fractions to find the area of a rectangle. So let's take a look at our word problem. Sonia wants to cover the rectangular floor of her closet with tile. The floor is two and a half feet by three and a half feet. She wants to use the fewest tiles possible and doesn't want to cut any tiles. The tiles come in three sizes, one foot by one foot, one half foot by one half foot, and one fourth foot by one fourth foot. Choose the tile that Sonia should use. What is the area of the closet floor? So let's go through this step by step by step. It says to choose the largest tile Sonia can use to tile the floor of the closet and avoid gaps or overlaps. And that's, our, that's our problem. That's what we're trying to figure out. So which square tile should Sonia choose? Explain. Well, let's take a look. Should she use the one foot by one foot, the one half foot by one half foot, or the one-fourth by one-fourth. Well, Sonia should choose the one-half by one-half foot tile square because the one-foot by one-foot square tiles would not cover the whole floor or would extend past the floor. The one-fourth by one-fourth tile squares would fit, but they are not the largest. So on the grid, let each square represent the dimensions of the tile you chose. Then draw a diagram of the floor. Okay, here's the diagram that we chose of the floor. So now it says to count the squares in your diagram. Well, we have two choices for counting the squares. We can count each square individually within our diagram, or we can count the number of squares down, which is one, two, three, four, five, and put that in our box over here. And then we can count the number of squares across, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and put that here. And we know that five times seven is 35, so we have 35 squares. Again, you can do it either way. You can multiply it out, or you can count each individual square. So then it asks, what is this area of the tile you chose? And let's go with the one fourth square foot. I'm abbreviating. You guys can actually write it out if you want. Since one square on your diagram represents an area of one fourth square foot, the area represented by 35 squares is 35 times 1 fourth or 35 fourths square feet. So the area of the floor written as a mixed number. Well to find our mixed number remember we have to take our numerator divided by our denominator which becomes our divisor. We know 3 can't go into 4 35 divided by 4 is 8. 8 times 4 is 32. Minus 35 minus 32 is 3. Our remainder becomes our new numerator. Our denominator stays the same. So the area of the floor written as a mixed number is 8 and 3 quarters square feet. So let's draw some conclusions based upon what we have done so far. It says to write a number sentence for the area of the floor using fractions greater than one. Then it says to explain how you knew which operations to use in your number sentence. Well, our number sentence for the area of the floor would be five halves times seven halves equals 35 fourths. Since I am finding the area of a rectangle, I use multiplication. And we know numerator times numerator equals numerator, 
denominator times denominator equals denominator. So now let's look even further. Explain how using fractions greater than 1 could help you multiply mixed numbers. Well, changing the fractions into greater than 1 helps you multiply because it changes the mixed number into a fraction greater than 1 and then you can multiply the numerators and the denominators. It just simplifies the process. So now, how many 1 4th foot by 1 4th foot tiles would Sonia need to cover 1 half foot by 1 half foot tile? And of course, she would need 4 tiles. So how could you find the number of 1 4th foot by 1 4th foot tiles needed to cover the same closet floor? Well, to answer that question, I could multiply 35 1 4th foot tiles by 4 since it takes 4 1 4th foot tiles to cover 1 1 half foot by 1 half foot tile. So now let's try to connect it all together. Sometimes it is easier to multiply mixed numbers if you break apart into whole numbers and fractions. So we're going to use an area model to solve 1 and 3 fifths times 2 and 3 fourths. So step 1 is to rewrite each mixed number as the sum of a whole number and a fraction. So to do that, we would take 1 and 3 fifths, and that would be equal to one whole number plus 3 fifths, or the fraction. We could also take 2 and 3 fourths, and that would be the same as 2 as the whole number plus 3 fourths the fraction. So now step 2 is to draw an area model to show the original multiplication problem. So over here on the side we're going to draw our area model. Okay, so we've drawn our model over here. We have split our rectangle along to show our whole number 2 and our whole number 1 here and then we've split down this way to show our 1 times 3 fourths over here. We also have our dotted line going this way to show our 3 fifths fraction down here times 2 our whole number and again over here to show our 3 fifths fraction times our 3 fourths fraction. So when we do that, when we take our two whole numbers, 1 times 2, that gives us an answer of 2. Take 1 times 3 fourths, that gives us an answer of 3 fourths. 3 fifths times 2 equals 6 fifths, and 3 fifths times 3 fourths equals 9 twentieths. Now, our next step says to draw dashed lines and label each section to show how you broke apart the mixed number in step 1. Well, of course, that's one of the things that we've already done. And then it says to find the area of each section. And again, we kind of did that all in step two. So add the area of each section to find the total area of the rectangle. So in order to add together the area of each section, we'll take our one times two of two, that'll be two. Then we'll take our answer of three fourths and bring it down here and add it together. Our answer of six fifths, bring it down to add it together and our answer of 9 twentieths and bring it down to add it together. Now I don't want you guys to spend a lot of time on this in regards to adding fractions, but let's keep in mind when you have your fractions of 3, 4, 6 fifths and 9 twentieths, the one thing that we have to do is we have to find a common denominator out of those. So we know that 4 or that 20 is a multiple of 4. We know that 5 is a multiple of 20. So therefore, our common denominator out of these three fractions would be the denominator 20. So in order to find equivalent fractions with the denominator of 20, we take the 20 divided by 4 equals 5. 5 times 3 is 15. We take 20 divided by 5 is 4. 4 times 6 is 24. Our 9 twentieths can be the same, and then we add our fractions all together which gives us a total of 88 twentieths. Now when we take this fraction greater than 1 or improper fraction and divide it out, we see that the product of 1 and 3 fifths times 2 and 3 fourths equals 4 and 2 fifths. So we're going to do a little refresher review in regards to our math journal. 
Uh, this is kind of in preparation for the FSA. We want you to copy these downs, but these are the steps that you should take every single time that you are working with a word problem. So it says math matters, and we have cubes coming down the sides, and this is an acronym saying to circle the key numbers. The next step is to underline the question that it is asking. Then box any math action words. Uh, anything that tells us what operation that we're going to be using, whether addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. The next one is to evaluate what steps do I take? What is it that I need to do to solve this problem? And then the last step is to solve and check. Does my answer make sense and how can I double check? So you can push pause and copy these down into your math journals right now. Okay, don't forget to copy down your password for today. Our password for today's lesson is to explain what is the first step that you do when you're multiplying a whole number times a fraction. What is the very first step you should always get in the habit of doing when you're multiplying a whole number by a fraction? Explain that, list that step down, be sure to bring it with you to class tomorrow. And I'll see you then.